Hey guys, welcome to all of you on our channel that is Achieve IAS. So today is 1 June 2019. So we will be discussing in this video the important articles of today's newspapers. Uh, so uh, there are in, in today's video I have just uh, uh, focused on the Hindu uh, but not on the articles of other newspapers as we do in earlier videos. Uh, but let's see what are the uh, articles of today. So only one article was important in the Hindu uh, of today and that, that was uh, outlining the first 100 days. So it is basically an article which highlighted uh, the important issues that, uh, that the new government at the center is facing and what should be its approach in first 100 days or in fact in the long term. So let's see what the article's uh, uh, crux points to. So it is basically, the, uh, it tells about the task that the next government faces. So I have made broad points so let's see what uh, the first point is basically the author talks about uh, expanding the home delivery of services so in uh, as you know friends we are a welfare state so suddenly uh, our government has the responsibility to do welfare of the vulnerable sections of society or in fact any citizen of India so for that purpose the government provides it uh, provides various kinds of services so in this context this, uh, the delivery of services uh, is what the author talks about so uh, it, uh, the author suggest to expand the delivery of services like uh, cooking gas healthcare uh, multiple citizens services extra because uh, um, the, uh, the citizen interacts with the government at the level of delivery of services and in India we face a considerable issue in the in this delivery however for from uh, a few years uh, 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 from near about uh, four to five years this approach is changing and efficiency is coming in in the government uh, uh, delivery of services through uh, through uh, initiatives like Aadhaar card and linking of your bank accounts with Aadhaar card and DBTs that is direct benefit transfers. So second point that the author highlights is that there must be a uh, separation between point of decision and point of delivery. So what this means uh, earlier what, what was the procedure uh, the, the decision makers and the providers of the delivery uh, they, they were in fact merging at one point uh, and it, uh, it was causing a lot of kind of harassment of uh, people in getting government services so here author suggests that uh, they, these two points of decision and the delivery must be separated to eliminate red tapism and the third thing that the author highlights is is of the use of technology and uh, this use of uh, technology it can be in any uh, government sector or uh, uh, different uh, uh, kind of we can say uh, pro, uh, different sectors but uh, author specifically says that the need of technology specifically uh, in case of agriculture and healthcare sector so there must be use of technology for example we can say genetic engineering in agriculture but not just genetic engineering we can also uh, stay, uh, say that uh, uh, use of uh, satellites for uh, for uh, these uh, for the settlement of uh, uh, crop damages and other things also so in this context the use of technology is important and the fourth and very important point that the author highlights is that triple a government delivery so what does does this triple a means so it means anytime anywhere and anyhow so the focus is basically on government delivery and the author suggests that government must focus on these three things that the services of the government are available at any time and they are available at any place and they are available with whatever means uh, which uh, with which we can uh, we can actually uh, ma make these deliveries possible so if technology is available that is good but uh, but the responsibility of the government is to ensure that the, these services reach the needy people and also author here uh, in next point highlights that there must be a shift from loan waivers and input subsidies to income support so as a lot of data currently now suggests that uh, loan waivers or input sub subsidies they were uh, they were not successful in uh, kind of elevating rural distress thus the, uh, the there must be shift towards the income support that is minimum income support uh, which was in news uh, uh, which which is in news from quite a long time now so also the author suggests that uh, there must be proper harnessing of data because uh, india is kind of emerging into a knowledge economy and uh, eight, there are 800 million users of mobile phones today in india out of which uh, half uh, half 
on smartphones so this leads to immense creation of data and this data can be effectively utilized to make precise uh, policies that uh, that could help a common citizen uh, in in improving its uh, uh, living conditions so here author suggests that this data can also be used in uh, uh, by in in promoting the artificial intelligence and data analytics and blockchain so certainly data is very important thing that it could be used for policy making and other thing the author highlights is that uh, uh, the government must take efforts uh, so that the startups uh, can, uh, can it is easy to set up startups and also it is not just easy to start them but also in case they wish to kind of uh, exit out of these start startups then the government should make efforts that this exit is easy because ultimately the economy needs uh, the uh, capital the capital or we can say the money in liquid liquid form so um, uh, obviously capital is necessary for for uh, for uh, for the for new investments for the growth of an economy so unless and until this uh, fixed uh, and uh, stressed uh, assets which uh, which may be uh, kind of we can say freezed in uh, freezed in a in a, in a kind of uh, um, uh, startup that 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 is not able to uh, get profit or or is not performing well then it is necessary that this capital must be freed so that's why uh, if, if uh, it is also not just uh, uh, important to uh, to make the st uh, setting up of startups easy but also it is important that the, uh, that exit is also easy if if they if the uh, if the startup uh, owners uh, wish to exit these startups other thing that the author highlights is that reg making regulatory framework simple so how it would benefit certainly the simple the regulatory framework the more we, uh, more is the clarity and more lesser is the uh, we can say uh, uh, fakeness and more is the transparency and thus more is the uh, kind of a confidence uh, co confidence of the investor so it will certainly uh, attract the foreign venture capital as well as uh, the domestic venture capital and also uh, here the author that uh, suggests a very important Important point that uh, there must be a kind of India first investment agency that must be directly set up under the Prime Minister office PMO office so that uh, this uh, India first investment agency what this uh, what, what should be its uh, role it should reach out to select fortune 1000 companies uh, to uh, to in order to persuade them to set up uh, their uh, shops or in fact uh, uh, their uh, uh, we can say infrastructure in India so that uh, the job creation can take place or and also the foreign capital would be invited uh, into the economy and also here the author suggests that for this there must be diplomatic engagement uh, with foreign firms to attract them to Indian markets and this will lead to job creation other thing that is very important and author wants to highlight is that of uh, uh, your reforming uh, opaque labor and law land laws currently the, uh, there is much opaqueness in uh, the, these uh, labor and law land laws and this discourages the small firms to expand for example 75 percent of the firms that are registered in India they employ less than 50 workers so there is a kind of no incentive to uh, increase their scale of operations because for example the companies that employ more than 100 uh, employees they have to comply with odd 200 labor laws so you can see that how much complexity is there uh, when when it comes to labor laws and then similar is the case with land laws and in fact uh, whenever uh, these uh, large companies that employ more than 100 employees uh, when they uh, whenever they try to uh, kind of we can say uh, lay off their uh, uh, surplus labor or they try uh, they, uh, they 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 try to kind of uh, 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 we modify their operations they uh, uh, the, then these regulations immense regulations uh, kind of discourage these uh, these companies to undertake such exercises so that's why author highlights that but uh, it is important that the labor and land laws are uh, can be reformed because more the mobility of the labor is the, the more is the uh, kind of we can say uh, the economic productivity because ultimately uh, how an output uh, c comes into existence it comes with the, your uh, uh, land labor and your capital and uh, uh, one more thing I am not able to remind, uh, recall that and uh, land laws also
so here uh, other thing that the author highlights is encouraging privatization so uh, privatization and that too without any restrictive covenants for example uh, 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 the previous government tried to uh, uh, we can say uh, privatize air india but there were certain restrictive covenants due to which uh, it failed to attract the uh, investors and uh, that's why privatization could not uh, 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 could not took place so that's why uh, the author suggests that privatization must be without any restrictive covenants governance and there must also be uh, privatization from the PSUs which are not performing or for example the banks which are not performing and also the author suggests that there must be proper recognition of the non-performing assets by the banks uh, so that uh, there could be proper assessment that what are the uh, what is the size of these non-performing assets and accordingly a precise recapitalization program could be prepared uh, for, for, uh, for, for reviving any stressed bank so in fact uh, author also suggests that there must be narrowing of Priority sector lending, as well as there must be kind of merger of banks, so uh, so that the weak banks that are not performing they get eliminated, and there must be a kind of uh, we can say professionalism in these banks, so that uh, the focus could be on ensuring the capital availability, ensuring the liquidity uh, in the market, so that uh, the new investment the, the cycle of investments could be sustained. And uh, other thing and last thing that the uh, author uh, highlights is that there must be focus also should be on execution and delivery. There must not just be focus on uh, kind of we can say uh, initiating new measures. There must be a proper execution and uh, um, uh, implementation of such initiatives. So for that purpose, the author suggests that there must be a uh, delivery unit uh, that uh, that must be under the prime minister's office so that it can monitor and uh, it can uh, do deep monitoring as well as follow up to ensure that the execution and implementation of the initiatives that are taken by the government, uh, the, uh, the implementation of such uh, initiatives. Uh, is uh, is happening in a uh, fine manner so the this is all about uh, this article and uh, friends this is all about as well for your today's video because there were not uh, that much uh, of articles that were important in today's newspapers so lastly let me tell you friends that uh, these are the four questions of today uh, that is mains answer writing so uh, as i have told you uh, if you are following our channel that you must be knowing then you must be knowing that we are running a kind of answer writing initiative in which uh, we people give you daily four questions to write based on the current affair articles so you have to write the questions of uh, answers of these and you have to send to us on our, on our uh, uh, email id or for that matter on our number so there there is a minimum fee for that but you, uh, if you are interested we can share the details with you but uh, these are the four questions of today on your screen you can read them and in case you are willing to join you can join us so this is all about today's lecture and this is our contact number that is 89684264811 and this is our email id that is a gyes21 at the rate gmail.com and this is a uh, web link so this is the link of our website so you can also visit our website also uh, in case you are interested to jo uh, join our uh, courses uh, for the purpose of uh, your uh, your mains uh, the upsc mains 2019 or for that matter for the preparation of 2020 uh, upsc csc so this is all about today's lecture friends if you liked it then do it then do you en uh, do ensure that you share it with your friends and also ensure that you like our uh, you uh, like our video and subscribe to our channel and also do not forget to press the bell icon because then only you will get all the notifications of the updates that we do on our youtube channel so thank you friends have a very nice day